Hi, it's time for a walk time rant. I thought I'd do one on debunking and critical thinking because what brought this up is a recent video that involves our old friend Solar Roadways. There was a video released back in September, so it's not new, but I only just found out about it. And it's a New Zealand contest kind of thing. It's like a national science slash public speaking contest for high school students or first year university students or whatever it is. It has to be something that's like a new innovation that can help uh, New Zealand with its like New Zealand economy and lifestyle and all that sort of stuff. It's got to involve science and innovation and it's judged on three different merits. One is its uh, scientific validity or whatever. The next is its uh, impact on a potential impact on the New Zealand economy and third on the public speaking and it's kind of primarily like a public speaking uh, contest but there's like scholarships involved and things like that. Anyway I'm, I don't want this video to be about that particular talk from this uh, high school student but she talked about solar roadways not just solar freaking roadways but all the different solar roadways and basically the whole video I won't link to it um, but if you do find the video they are deleting comments because they're potentially harmful and all that sort of stuff and well that's a whole nother argument but the point is is that she just went through all the regular talking points of solar roadways, all the marketing BS that goes along with that and all the numbers of how it's going to pay for itself and how it's going to save the planet and all this sort of stuff and well let's go for a walk shall we? I'll show you where I am. Now I, I definitely don't want this to be about her because I think she actually did quite a good job in terms of like public speaking and everything like that. She did a really good job. She put a lot of effort into this presentation about how solar roadways and I believe she like won one of the minor scholarship awards. So that's, you know, a fantastic. I don't want to discourage that, but it raises the question about solar roadways and the value of debunking and critical thinking. Now, the first question is how did this pass vetting? Like there's supposed to be some sort of scientific vetting for this thing and of course I don't need to debunk solar roadways again but the thing is if you just go on Google and type in solar roadways go on YouTube you type in solar roadways there's just countless debunking videos mine Thunderfoot other blog articles and other videos just thoroughly debunking this and it's not new it's like four and a half, I think it's approaching almost five years old now. This solar roadways thing has been debunked, thoroughly debunked as one of the most impractical ideas in history. It's almost like a poster child for uh, impractical ideas. And it's just a joke. So anyone either doing a talk on this or researching this should have realized that this thing was just a completely impractical idea. So. I'll show you where I am. Here we are. We're at the beach. <laughs> Fantastic. Oh, there's a lot of people out already. It's fairly early in the morning, but uh, which way will I go? Let's go this way, shall we? Please forgive any uh, wind noise here. I do have a sock over my little shotgun mic on my uh, Sony Next camera. Anyway, so the first question is like, how did it pass that? There's obviously no critical thinking that went into this um, rather, I believe, like a prestigious national, you know, scholarship science innovation award kind of thing. So that's the first question. There's just, uh, just in the judges for these things, uh, there's no critical thinking skills at all. The next question is, is that the uh, girl that did this, like, She's obviously passionate about this and I don't want to take this away. I think it's great that we should encourage people to do these sorts of things. But when she uh, went to go, oh, this solar roadways, it sounds fantastic. And I can understand why people think it sounds fantastic, right? There's a, you know, a lot of merit to it if it did. Well, it works, but if it was actually practical, it'd be, you know, pretty good. So she started researching this, you know, thinking it's a great idea. She's going to give a talk on it, passionate about the environment or whatever, or, you know, innovation. She might want to be an engineer or a scientist or an innovator or whatever, which is absolutely fantastic. But like she should have looked at this and gone, there's no way you couldn't. 
I don't believe there's any way you could have researched this as thoroughly as she did. She put a lot of effort into the presentation and not have found all the debunking stuff about this. So Eva, she was so caught up in the concept, as a lot of people are, that they just ignore, they just want to believe so badly that this idea is so fantastic and innovative and they just <laughs> throw aside any or all critical thinking that they have. And it opens up the question of uh, like critical thinking skills, not only in the general public, but in uh, students in general. Like uh, they learn all sorts of like religious BS and stuff like that at, uh, at schools. You know, there's big debate over that and they learn, you know, there's ethics classes, which are great. But where are the critical thinking classes? Are there any? If you know, please leave it in the comments down below. Not only for high school, students um, who are you know fairly capable and should understand should have skills in this sort of stuff but what about engineering students like or just any university students for that matter it doesn't matter what the degree is where are the critical thinking classes once again if you've done these or you know that there's uh, critical thinking type classes in the universities let us know because well there really needs to be because i think it's so valuable there's a lot of people who make the argument that well all these debunking videos and stuff like that are just an absolute waste of time but I don't think so because there's very few people doing them for starters and if more people did them then more people will help it'll help build their critical thinking skills and next time they see a claim for something that's huge you know and groundbreaking and it's all does the magnitude better why didn't I think of this and they might be able to like uh, actually do their own research and actually just run some numbers or at least try and think critically about it before in this particular case doing a whole 12 minute presentation with absolutely no critical uh you know aspect to it there's there's no question in the claims it's gospel they're just you know spewing out the numbers that it's going to pay for itself and it's going to be this and that and it's going to you know that it just works they just take it for granted absolutely zero critical thinking on the part of not only the judges but also on uh, the girl that did this and oh look jellyfish jellyfish there you go check it out cool huh <laughs> love it anyway um, yeah there's blue bottles and jellyfish along here occasionally uh, if you don't believe in global uh, warming which is another critical thinking thing well the oceans get warmer more, more blue bottles come through every year, unfortunately. Anyway, if you're wondering about this beach, it's about uh, six kilometers long. And I know a lot of people are gonna ask, well, what's the harm in stuff like this? What's the harm in having these big dreams? And that's how innovation happens. Yeah, I'm gonna have to quote, well, it wasn't Carl Sagan who said this, but he also said it, um, is that <laughs> don't be so open-minded that your brains fall out. And in this case, don't be so blinded by the uh, belief in this you know, grandiose idea that you just ignore all practicality. Um, so what could she have done in this particular case when she's researching this? I think it's a bit of a shame. Start researching it, obviously find all the debunking articles and then maybe start to run the numbers yourself. It's not that hard. I mean, they're pretty basic stuff. This is somebody who's going into university. Anyone has the skills to run the numbers on something like this, or at least think critically. This was great, but how can we still use the idea and make it better? She could have come up with some innovation in mounting solar panels over, over roads or over sidewalks or over car parks or some other, you know, it can, these big ideas are great and can lead to other innovation. And engineers do this all the time as well. We come up with these grandiose ideas and then we do back of the envelope calculations. That's why we do them. And we go like, well, are we an order of magnitude out? If we're an order of magnitude or several orders of magnitude out, we'll generally just drop the idea or need to modify it almost completely or fairly dramatically. But if we're, you know, maybe half an order out or, you know, 100%, 50%, something like that, then we can refine the idea and we might be able to make something out of it. But sometimes, you know, you have to understand futility. That there's a time that you have to give up or change your idea or concept radically because it's just not practical. My fault, the whole point, was to find a way to practice nuclear war without destroying ourselves. To get the computers to learn from mistakes we couldn't afford to make. Except 
that I never could get Joshua to learn the most important lesson. What's that? Futility, that there's a time when you should just give up. And this is why I think that all these debunking videos are incredibly valuable because it teaches, hopefully teaches people to at least think critically and don't just take claims on face value or whatnot. And this is why I always say in my videos like, don't trust me, I'm just another person to believe in on the internet. Run your own numbers, the data's down below, do it. It's not that hard. Just use, you know, basic engineering principles that you can teach anyone. It's easy with Google these days, trivial to sort of uh, do your own research on stuff. Anyone can do it. You just need to be sort of taught and put in that mindset. And let me know what you think about uh, my debunking videos. I'd love to do more, but there's so many things out there and they actually take a lot of effort. I think uh, Fun Thunderfoot did a uh, recent survey of his audience and uh, found that, yeah, the debunking ones were the most valued videos. And as for solar freaking roadways, yes, it's still going. <laughs> It just won't die. I don't know why they haven't run out of funding. Don't know if they got new funding. Haven't bothered to look, but they just posted on Instagram recently a photo of solar freaking cruise ships to put <laughs> to put their silly panels on, uh, on, on on the top decks of cruise ships. And the instant I saw that, it reminded me of Leisure Suit Larry. It's like, oh. <laughs> Oh, hilarious. So, solar roadways just gets ridiculous, more ridiculous as time goes on. I wonder what ever happened to that military deployment unit that they're going to parachute in behind enemy lines. <laughs> Believe it. It's, it's, solar roadways is just such a parody these days. So I think this New Zealand video is just a real good uh, case example of where critical thinking skills on the part of both the person doing the presentation and the people evaluating it, just don't be blinded by the idea. So let me know down below what you think and, well, I don't know, that's enough of that. Hopefully no more videos on solar roadways, but it is the lol that keeps on giving. And as always, you can discuss on the EEV Log Forum. Catch you next time. I'm off for a swim. Ha <laughs> ha.